Well, hi, this is Dan Macon with another pasture lambing tip. Uh, this time we're going to talk about moving young pears onto fresh feed. Uh, we use a dog, but it takes a pretty special dog to make this work well and not create total chaos. So I'll kind of walk through the things that, that we try to do. One of the things we start with is a plan. Um, we always talk about what we're going to do and who's going to do what. And um, even if I'm working by myself, I think through the steps in this process. And then with a dog like this, I think it's really important to have a dog that's calm and confident. Um, she doesn't get in too big a hurry. Um, but she's pretty good about, uh, about getting movement and about standing up to, to use that may be trying to stand up to her. So here's the other perspective from um, starting out. One of the things we'll do is go to the very back of a pasture or paddock um, and kind of see what we've got in terms of uh, dry use and new pairs. And we start getting some movement down to where we're going to move here. Um, but we'll drop the young pairs and just let them stay behind. Um, we don't insist that they all come together. We do try to make sure we get everybody up and, and let a mother up before we ask anybody to move. And, and you'll see why that's important here in just a second. Um, but we'll start getting some movement down towards the corner of this paddock where we're going to let them on to new feed here. Um, they will get that movement directed in the right uh, way and we'll, we'll start heading down the hill here. And if you look closely back where May's working right now, we are going to leave some younger pairs behind us and just let them stay there. We'll come back for them in just a second. One of the things that we find with all livestock, and it's even true of, of very, very young lambs, is that one of their instinctive behaviors is to go back to where they just left. Um, and we can use that to our advantage in many cases, but it can cre create problems trying to move sheep like this if we're not well mothered up. Um, if the lambs aren't sure that they're with their own mom, they may double back and try to come back into this old pasture, uh, which can create lots of problems for us after we get the movement done. You can see there are a few young lambs in this um, bigger mob of ewes here, but most of these are the dry ewes. And um, we'll find that, that the leaders in the front will really draw the sheep behind them. We also chain our guard dogs up when we're moving like this, just so that they're not overly excited and, and disrupting what we're trying to do with the sheep. Um, and then we can move them into the new paddock later. So at this point, I've got the sheep kind of located where I want to let them through. And May is able to hold them. Um, they know that it's time to move, and so it's not too much pressure on them. Um, but May will hold them there, and then as soon as I open the the fence here, you can see that they go right on into fresh feed. One of the things that we found when we can, um, if we can open a fence to where the sheep see really lush feed, um, that's really going to hold them. And that way they're not wandering up the hill away from their babies and, and uh, creating more problems once they're in this new pasture. So now our next step is to go pick up um, some of the other sheep that, that haven't come through yet. And you can see that the sheep that we just moved in here are really staying pretty good where we placed them. And that's, that's always handy for drawing the other sheep. And here we're bringing some of the younger pairs. These are probably lambs that are two and three days old. And so moms are sticking with them pretty tight. Um, and we're just kind of letting them move at their own pace. Um, we're keeping that forward movement going, um, but we're letting them set the pace that we're, we're moving at here. And here's an aerial perspective of that last move. You can see um, I'm moving pretty slowly. Um, it takes a while to get into her flight zone. And I let her pick up her lamb there so that everybody's happy. May is, is staying a respectful distance, and um, it's really nice to have her um, as another set of, of ears and eyes to get movement like this. This is a pair that's less than 24 hours old here, 
And um, they're pretty mobile. They're moving under their own power pretty good. I'm just letting them, I want them to keep moving, but I'm letting them set the pace. I may move them 75 to 100 yards and then let mom kind of take a rest with them and, and let them nurse a little bit and make sure that they're good and mothered up that way. This pair um, is a little bit older, and um, I'm helping May keep movement down the hill, but again, we've got sheep ahead of them on this fresh feed, and that, that draw really helps encourage movement in the right direction. Um, but we're letting them move at a pace where the lamb can keep up with mom and, and uh, we don't get them separated, and that really minimizes the doubling back that we might have otherwise. When we're starting to bring these, um, these younger pairs in after the main bunch is moved, sometimes I'll go way to the back of the paddock again and, and um, kind of pick up two or three at a time if they're pretty mobile. And um, that shortens the time that it takes to get them into fresh feed as well. And here you can see pair number three coming. These moves are a lot easier when we have such nice weather. You know, when it's when it's wet and rainy and cold, um, we take a little more time in terms of, of making sure the lambs keep up and that mom has found found their lambs. But I'm happy with how these guys came on to fresh feed. Sometimes with really, really young lambs, um, we might carry them. And these are lambs that were born um, overnight. And so they're still even a little bit wet. They haven't totally dried off yet. So rather than expect them to walk the 150 yards down to fresh feed, we'll carry them. But we carry them such that the ewe knows where they are and will follow. Now if I had these tucked up under my arms or, or carrying um, up higher where she couldn't see them and smell them, she wouldn't follow me, but by grabbing them by the front legs, by the cannon bone, uh, we can carry them at a height where she can smell them and see them and, and hear them if they vocalize, and you can tell that she'll follow right along. Now, not every ewe is as well bonded as this ewe is, and you can see she kind of gave up on me a little bit, so I just bent down and, and let her see her lambs again, and she came right on. And those, those lambs will pop right up here when we get them onto the fresh grass and, and uh, everybody's happy. And I'll make sure that she's got, got reconnected with them before I take off and catch the next pair. This, um, you know, sometimes I'll use a dog just to kind of hold um, sheep in place as I'm moving other animals down the hill. And, and this way, um, May's pretty calm and patient, and she'll keep that ewe from trailing back up the hill um, to get away from the pressure. And then I can come in behind here and, and kind of get movement directed um, at a good pace. May is, is very quiet, as you can see here. She's staying behind me, which I like, um, but the sheep definitely know she's there. And um, if I lay her down, that takes a little bit of the pressure off and, and we get good forward movement here. Here's kind of a, a rear view of, of the similar type of move. I've got May laid down behind me and um, I'm just kind of urging this pair along. May will come up here in just a second and um, she'll help maintain that pressure where we need it. Um, but again, it's not just letting May run all over. We've got pretty good control and, and uh, she's definitely paying attention. And then we'll come in behind here and, and uh, May just creeps up and, and we got that ewe down to fresh feed. 
So I think the bottom line here is be patient, take your time, move at their pace, and um, good luck.